Hey guys, my name's Joe and I'm the Kentucky Atheist. If you like what you see today, maybe think about subscribing to my channel, clicking the like button. Those are the things that you can do most to help the channel. Before we get going, I want to say thank you to all my channel members and everyone that supports the channel through Patreon and, and many other things. You guys make all this possible and thank you. Lane fast, call it high speed. I've been working hard, yeah. I've been working nightly. If you think you'll win, ha, nah, I'm likely. I be taking shots, yeah, cold blooded, icy. Watching numbers grow is what I call sightseeing. In the front row, run it up when they hype me. The following grows, they know how to ignite me. Call me CEO, I've been running sh right, see. And I ain't playing games, I create my own lane, making pleasure out of pain, uh. Turning losses into gains, I'm the boss, I'm making change, I've been rocking this exchange, uh Popping off and risking things, gonna make a fucking name, I just wanna be famous But I don't want that cheap fame, no I'm not that vain, I just wanna be greatness So, it's that time of year again The time of year when normal people lose their minds And when the Jesus freaks among us act even more crazy and violent No, it's not the release of a new Harry Potter movie it's election time here in the U.S. of America. And who needs a candidate when you have a savior? Let's take a look. June 14th, 1946, God looked down on his planned paradise and said, I need a caretaker. So God gave us Trump. God said, I need somebody willing to get up before dawn, fix this country, work all day, fight the Marxists, eat supper, then go to the Oval Office and stay past midnight at a meeting of the heads of state. So God made Trump. I need somebody with arms, strong enough to rustle the deep state, and yet gentle enough to deliver his own grandchild. Somebody to ruffle the feathers, tame cantankerous World Economic Forum, come home hungry, have to wait until the First Lady is done with lunch with friends, then tell the ladies to be sure and come back real soon and mean it. So God gave us Trump. That's right, folks. I will fear no Democrats as I walk through them. Well, you know the, how the rest of it goes. God gave us Trump, right? I mean, he's practically baby Jesus. He shits in a diaper, so it must be true, right? Just in case, though, let's take a closer look. Off the cuff, if I can read that. Okay. <laughs> God gave us grace on November 8, 2016, to change the course we were on. God had been taken out of our schools and lives. A nation had turned its back on God. And I encourage you to use this time at home to get to home to get back in the Word, read our Bibles, and spend time with our families. Our president gave us so much hope where just a few short months ago, we had the best economy, the lowest unemployment and wages going up. It was amazing. With our great president, vice president and this administration and all the great people in this country praying daily, we will get through this and get back to a place that's stronger and safer than ever. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Please come on up. I did not know he was going to do that, but he's a friend of mine, and I, I do appreciate it. I think that's pretty conclusive, don't you? I mean, Mike Lindell is a crackhead that sold pillows so uncomfortable you had to pray for a good night's sleep. So that all but makes this prophecy, right, guys? Oh, wait, that's old, and Trump ended up having the worst numbers in history. Well, that's just because if the real Christians like Trump would have prayed better, things would have probably worked out better. You don't have to take my word for it, though. Let Orange Jesus himself tell you how you're supposed to practice your faith. The Bible certainly is one of, if not, I mean, it is the book. Let's pray together, may we? Yes. I believe in God. I am Christian. I'm a Protestant. I'm very proud of it. Presbyterian, to be exact. I'm Presbyterian. Boy, that's down the middle of the road, folks, in all fairness. 
I mean, Seventh-day Adventist, I don't know about. I have great relationship with God. I have great relationship with uh, the evangelicals. And I go to church a lot. Always on Christmas, always on Easter, uh, always when there's a major occasion. And during the, during the Sundays, I'm a Sunday church person. I like to do the right thing where I don't have to actually ask for forgiveness. When we go and church and and when I drink my little wine, which is about the only wine I drink, and have my little cracker, I guess that's a form of asking for forgiveness. And I do that as often as possible because I feel cleansed. We were having fun when I said, I drink the wine, I drink, I, I eat the cracker. If I do something wrong, I think I just try and make it right. I don't bring God into that picture. My wife and I pray for you. Thank you. Well, I need it probably more than anybody in this room. You can stay if you want it because you need the prayer more than I do, I think. I want to just pray for Arnold, if we can, for those ratings. I can understand the evangelicals to a certain extent saying, well, maybe he's not as nice as we want him to be, but they also want to see the country be great. Why do you think those voters are drawn to you? Well, I'm Protestant, I'm Presbyterian, which means something. Maybe he's not as perfect on the Bible, but I did go to Sunday school for many years, I want to tell you. I get sent Bibles by a lot of people. Where yes. are all those Bibles anyhow lot. now? <laughs> well, actually, we, we keep them in a certain place, a very, very nice place. My second favorite book of all time. What's my first favorite book? The Bible. The Bible is special. The Bible, the more you see it, the more you read it, the more incredible it is. Are you an Old Testament guy or a New Testament guy? Uh, probably equal. Proverbs, the chapter, never bend to envy. I've had that thing all of my life where you're, people are bending to envy. Two Corinthians, right? Two Corinthians, 317. That's the whole ball game. There's no way I would ever do anything to do negative to a Bible. God is the ultimate. I mean, God created this. And, you know, here's the Pacific Ocean right behind us. So, uh, nobody, no thing, no, there's nothing like God. All right, after that, everybody, let's take a minute and pray, okay? Thank you, Orange Jesus, for they were lost, but now they are found. You showed them the way, the truth, and the life. They say you lied more than 30,000 times, but that's just 30,000 lies. Please forgive these people for they are blind and only through you they will see the light. And please, Lord Trump, send me some Mountain Dew and maybe some of them Trump steaks because I can't afford to feed my family. I spent my last dime on these beautiful Trump trading cards. Amen. Now, don't you feel better? I do. I know what you're thinking, right? Maybe I'm wrong. But you know who can't be wrong? Billboards. That's who. And not just any billboards. Billboards with Bible verses, they're never wrong. Take that, you un-American doubters. Also, preachers. Everyone knows that preachers aren't allowed to lie to you. I mean, they stand on a stack of Bibles and take an oath to always tell the truth and do the right thing. So they never lie. And although it's illegal for a nonprofit church to back a candidate in a political election, they decided to back a Messiah instead. Just let Pastor Shane Vaughn tell you about it. I mean, his name is Pastor, right? Make America great again. I need a prophet that'll say what I say about America. God found a man. He sought for a man. That's why for nine years they tried to destroy him with Russia, Russia, Russia. They tried to destroy him with every lie they could and everything they throw comes right back at him because when God finds a man, God anoints a man. And when God anoints a man, he appoints a man. And when God appoints a man, he protects a man from the plans of the enemy. God spoke to me yesterday the minute I heard the news. He said, if you don't get your feet on the ground where he's going to walk, I'll take my blessings off of you. He said, I've called you to lift your voice and tell my people who my man is to stand behind him, to fight for him. This is war. 
call me a Trump worshiper all you want to but I know what came from my Trump worship the blessings of the Lord when you put your hand to the anointing the anointing will put its hand to you and let us not forget that Marjorie Taylor Greene herself took a break from her intellectual studies into space lasers and white supremacy to come here and tell us how Trump is just like Jesus. Now, if Klan mom herself is saying that it's true, it has to be true. America. And the fake news media want to constantly talk about, oh, President Trump is a convicted felon. Well, you want to know something? The man that I worship is also a convicted felon. And he was murdered on a Roman cross. We've seen political corruption. We have seen this throughout history. This is nothing new. It's just the first time in American history we have been forced to deal with it. Now here's how we deal with it, America. Here's how we deal with it, Nevada. You have to tell your friends and family, I'm, I'm sorry, friends and family. You have to get over being tired of the drama you see on the news. Because if we do not show up and vote on November 5th, if we do not bring all of our friends and family out, the drama that everyone is sick and tired of is going to get worse. Because I work with the Democrats, I listen to them every single day. They're going to raise your taxes. They're going to destroy generational wealth. That's right, you're gonna be broke. And you think gas prices are high now? Just wait until you're forced to drive an electric vehicle. I think that's pretty conclusive, don't you? Now that I have your attention, Christians, come closer. Let's have a little discussion here, okay? Are you all fucking crazy? Have you all lost your fucking minds? Trump is not Jesus. Do you actually buy this crazy nonsense? You know, there's a whole big bunch of you out there that like to deny evolution and pretend that man put fucking saddles on dinosaurs and rode around like the goddamn Flintstones was a documentary. This is nuts. You'll believe that anything that Fox News tells you about your orange messiah, Trump, but deny every bit of science put in front of you, especially you creationists. This is for you. You deny the most basic science, yet you'll believe the words of a man that runs around and lies over and over. Trump told more than 30,000 lies during his presidency. He cheated on his wife and then paid off a porn star to hide, hide their relationship from an election so that he could win. Meanwhile, his wife was at home with a newborn he lied on his taxes. He stole our nation's most secret documents, including national defense documents. He's admitted to as much. None of this is, is, is anything I'm making up. Donald Trump was the worst president in U.S. history. This isn't my opinion. It's a fact. When Donald Trump lost the 2020 election, and he did lose, he knew he lost. He admitted he lost. He acted like a child and set up a coup to overthrow our government. But being the idiot he is, he failed at that too. You can't be honest and tell me that what Donald Trump did benefited the American people. You can't be honest and tell me that reelecting the worst president in American history is in our best interest. You can't be honest and tell me that anything that Donald Trump has in store for us is beneficial to anyone other than Donald Trump and the richest people in this country. You can't name a single thing that Donald Trump or the MAGA Republican Party did for America that benefited the country as a whole. You can try, I'll wait, but you'll not come up with anything. Let me know in the comments if you do. Trump doesn't give a shit about you. Listen to him say the words himself. You listen to everything else he says, listen to this. Isn't that breeze nice? Do you feel the breeze? Because I don't want anybody going on me. We need every voter. I don't care about you. I just want your vote. I don't care. Wake up. You're in a cult. Let's be honest. You're not going to listen to me. And why should you? I'm a dumb redneck from Kentucky. What do I know? But for the people who have the least bit of sense and actually give a shit about your fellow man, 
all you have to do is vote. If people vote, Republicans lose. If people go out and vote, Donald Trump and the MAGA Republican Party will never be in power again. But we have to go vote. With things like Project 2025 on the horizon, which I will do a video on in the near future, it is so important that we vote in this election and prevent the death of democracy as we know it. Vote. Thanks, guys. That's all I got for you today. If you like what you see here, subscribe, like the channel. There's a join button if you want it. All my links are in the description for Patreon, PayPal, Twitter, Facebook, Amazon wish list. All that stuff's listed below if you want to look at it. If not, that's cool too. Have a great one. See you guys soon. Bye.